For, uh, my name is Luke. I'm the pastor uh, here at Kish. And again, it's so good to see y'all. If you're um, kind of visiting as part of the students or family or that sort of thing, uh, welcome again. Uh, you'll find out pretty quickly uh, that I'm, <clears throat> I'm sort of an odd pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the elders that just said yes. Um, and so uh, I want to invite you in to sort of a, what in my mind is going to be like a really important, but also uh, maybe a bit of a different uh, sort of sermon that I'm about to share. My hope uh, is that basically the month of January here at Kish, uh, to, talk, to talk and share and think together about kind of what we are as a church and what our, our mission or vision is uh, as we go forward. And so it seems to me to be a good time of year to kind of say, okay, let's get our bearings here a little bit. Where are we and what are we doing and kind of refocus and that sort of thing. And so um, that's what we're going to do starting today. Um, And what I would prefer to do, which I can't uh, logistically make happen, is I would actually prefer to have the conversation that I'm about to have with you all uh, inside of like a hundred different living rooms, you know, like I'd just show up at your house or you'd show up at my house and we kind of sit down and we'd kind of dream and converse back and forth and talk about what is this whole deal about church and what is kind of the, the, the point and the vision and the hope and that sort of thing. Uh, for obvious reasons, logistically, it's going to be impossible for me uh, to sit down with y'all in a hundred different living rooms. So instead, uh, here's what I'm going to do. This is my, um, you can scope it out, my Amish made rocking chair that I got about a dozen or so years ago. Uh, It's made here in the Big Valley uh, by one of my good friends, a guy by the name of Chani Swari, uh, who's an Amish guy. Uh, He made this for me years ago. And so y'all don't, you have comfy chairs, all that kind of stuff, but you don't have an Amish made rocking chair and you certainly don't have an Afghan. So um, next time you come, you might want to bring an Afghan. But basically what what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring the living room to you. Um, So if you can do this, I know it's crazy and I know I'm weird, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, The idea for today is to act as if we're having a conversation in your living room or in my living room about church. Now, this conversation will be a little bit odd because I'm the only one that's going to talk. Um, <clears throat> but if you can just go with me, um, I, I actually really feel that this, uh, what I'm about to share today, I hope that the impact of it in like five or 10 or 20 years is staggering Uh, compared to how odd it is that I'm sitting in a rocking chair talking to you today. And so uh, with that being said, let me pray, and then we'll kind of jump into what I have to share. Heavenly Father, uh, I invite you to come into this place. Um, I ask you to give uh, me clarity, and passion, as much passion as I feel inside me in my words um, about what I'm going to talk about. I ask, Lord, that you would help uh, folks that are hearing this, whether they are um, <laughs> happen to be in this space today because um, they're a, a student or a, a family member or friend of the students that sang, or whether they've been sitting in a chair at this church for 20-some years. Uh, I pray that for everybody... Uh, here today, that um, what I share would be, would be helpful to their lives, but I ultimately pray most, Lord, that you would take this time and these words and bring glory to yourself through this, uh, not just in an emotional moment in a church service, <clears throat> but more than that, that you would bring glory to yourself through a lifelong um, group of people, <laughs> community of people that are uh, are serving and loving you um, in response to what you've done for us. Uh, I just pray that you'd be with us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to start out, uh, usually I kind of pre-manuscript out all the stuff that that I'm going to say, and then semi-memorize that, and then share what I've memorized. And I purposely have not done that today. And the reason I haven't done that today is because I want this to be a little bit more um, the kinds of things that are like stirring in my heart, 
uh, and I share them just more authentically with y'all from my, uh, my chair here. And so I want to start with a question, and the question is, uh, what is church? What is church? Um, kind of in addition to that, what is the mission of a church? And I'm going to guess we have, I don't know, 200 or more folks. <laughs> Y'all are so wonderfully listening. 248, thank you. Um, <laughs> it is a conversation after all. Um, <laughs> And you're all thinking to yourself, okay, what is church? And some of you, my guess is, are thinking, well, clearly, you know, I'm sitting in the church right now, and so this is, this is church, because it's about a building and about a service. Um, others of you might have a different idea for what church is. It might be more about the community that you're part of. Um, and some people might have other sorts of ideas about what kind of the church is doing or how the church is changing people or all sorts of other possibilities as to our definition of what the church is, and especially what the mission of the church is. And my guess is, with a group this large, the amount of possible definitions for what the church is could be so, not that any of them are inherently bad, but we can kind of lose focus or clarity because they all are a little bit nuanced differently than, than each other. And... Um, so before I get into what I want to share about the mission of this particular church going forward, uh, I first want to start with a couple of obstacles, um, obstacles to kind of the mission of the church going forward. I want to share two of them with you if I can. The first obstacle is um, that we now live in what is called a, or, or what I, I and some other people describe as a post-Christian world, a post-Christian world. Now, what I mean by that is not that Jesus isn't real and that we aren't uh, faithfully serving and following him, that sort of thing. I don't mean that at all. I'm clearly a pastor, and this is a Christian church, and it's going to remain, <laughs> remain that. What I mean is this, that, and it's probably not that surprising to most of you, that our society or our culture is no longer kind of foundationally or fundamentally built up on Christian principles, Christian worldview, uh, on this idea that the gospel is a real life-changing thing it, for, people, for people's actual lives. And so church becomes kind of something that you go or kind of an event instead of kind of a, a culturally uh, focused uh, experience that most people are used to. And the reason why that's an obstacle is because if you look at 2023 and going forward, there's a giant question, which is basically like, how do we conduct or what does church look like in a world where most people don't focus on or care about uh, church as we've known it maybe in the past? The other particular obstacle that I think we face here at Kish is basically something along the lines of that there's been a lot of transition. And so not only does that mean for some of you kind of longest time folks uh, that you know, you've, you've kind of been here with Pastor Doug for a long, long time, and then he's retired, and I'm kind of still doing random things like this. Um, but also, that means that we've had a lot of uh, shift in the people that are here. And so even in my time as part of Kish, I spent, uh, I've been part of this church three years, three or four years just coming, and three years as pastor. And in those six years, the faces that are here on a typical Sunday have changed pretty drastically. And that presents an obstacle, uh, not that it can't be overcome, but it just means that there's a lot of people that might say, if church is kind of a community of people, I don't feel like I know that community super well, and we need to kind of work on that together. So with those obstacles being said, uh, I want to now transition into kind of what uh, I want to share about the mission of our church. And the story of this uh, began uh, not this past August, but the August before, when we did like an elders retreat. And we met uh, out at uh, this camp that I'm part of, and we talked for a day or two about what the mission of Kish Church ought to be. And from there, we've spent, you know, months and months, and I wish y'all could have been in, like, these seemingly, like, hundreds of meetings describing this question of what is the mission of our church. And the reason why those questions are so important is because if you don't have a mission, if you don't have, like, a foundational or fundamental mission to what you're doing— then certainly what's going to happen is everybody's going to have their own view of what we should do, and we're going to lose focus, and we're going to lose the ability to kind of all head in a consistent direction 
without a foundational or fundamental mission. And so uh, through those meetings, we've came up with a, a mission statement for Kish that I would say is something like a draft mission statement at this point. Um, maybe like an 80% solution. Um, and I want to share it with you all in a, in a few minutes, but I'm going to do this like dramatic thing where I'm going to keep talking about what this mission statement is without actually telling you for a little bit lo longer. So um, if you're like the note kind of person and you're like, you wrote down like mission statement on your little paper, you're ready, just hold off a second longer. Because um, first I want to say this. Uh, you might say, especially if you're a person that's been around Kish for a long time, I thought we had a mission statement. Uh, maybe you would even know what that mission statement has been. Uh, which is real life, uh, one person at a time. And what I do want to say uh, very publicly, and I think you all know, um, that was kind of involved in Pastor Doug's uh, time in leading here. And he, I think, knows very clearly that I love him, and I know that he loves and supports what we're doing now because he's been in these conversations. Um, and so I want to I commend that idea of real life, one person at a time, because here at Kish, we are about real life. Um, we're not about putting on airs or falsities uh, trying to present a fake version of ourselves. We show up at church on Sunday and look all fancy and spiffy, and then we go home and we're a completely different person. And we're all also about one, one, one real person at a time, because what we care about here at Kish is uh, actual human beings, right? So, like, I see your faces. Like, we care about you because you're, you're part of this, this space now, um, not just theoretically helping theoretical people. However, the challenge with real life, one person at a time, is it, it, it's maybe a little bit more about the values that we have and not as much about a mission or a vision, uh, kind of what we're going to do, like what's the activity, where, where are we going to go to next? And so what I want to share with you today is kind of what we're coming up with about this idea of what, what do we as a church want to have as, as our mission? And so uh, when we had this discussion, we wanted to keep it simple. I have a friend who is part of a different church, and they did a whole new mission statement. And then I said, well, what's the mission statement? And he, he's like, wait, let me think about it for a second. And he had to like kind of do some mental gymnastics to remember the mission statement that he was part of the group they came up with. And I thought, well, we, we want to stay away from that. So we want to keep it simple, um, and we also want to keep it biblical. And so uh, without any further ado, our proposed mission statement is five words. And again, if you're the writer-down kind of person, this is a good thing to write down. Um, it goes like this, making apprentices who reflect Jesus, making apprentices who reflect Jesus. Now, let me just try to unpack that for a second. Just remember, we're, we're in our living room, so I know you can't like actually respond with words, but like if you've got to use a restroom or whatever, like th this is a living room situation. Um, next time, bring your Afghan. Making apprentices who reflect Jesus, what does that mean? So making, uh, that's a big word because it means two things in my mind. One thing that it means, look, that's great. Thank you, Glicks. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Um, one thing that it means is that we want to make new apprentices. So here at Kish, we want more people, right? The quantity of people that become followers of Jesus, we want that to increase. But it's also big because it means that anybody who is a follower of Jesus it's not like, hey, I got saved. Now I'm going to sit around twiddling my thumbs and eating Cheetos. Instead, you're going to continue in the apprenticeship process, right? You're going to become more and more like Jesus. And so the, the making apprentices is so vast that it includes the 30,000 people in Mifflin County that don't, aren't connected to churches, but it also includes the 200 or so people here at Kish that are already connected as a follower of Jesus. <clears throat> the next question is, why, why the word apprentice? <clears throat> it's, a, it's an odd word because most folks don't use it today, although I'm guessing most of you know what that means. Um, in my mind, the word apprentice is basically a substitute for the word disciple. And so Jesus was a big fan of the word disciple, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the word apprentice basically gets at the same idea without seeming like overly like spiritual, like we're better than people, or like there's something called a, a disciple that's like a super religious person, and then there's also just your everyday religious person. Apprentice, to me, seems a little more inviting to everybody, because basically, as you would probably know if you know anything about apprenticeship, is it basically means somebody shows up and says, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I need a master. That master, we would say, is Jesus, and when you come before that master, he's going to show you how to become more and more and more 
like him. And so there's always growth from the, the, the brand new, I don't know anything about the Bible or Christianity person, to the person who's uh, sitting on this rocking chair right now. There's always room for growth if everybody is working on their apprenticeship. Next is this idea of who reflect Jesus, right? So making apprentices who reflect Jesus. Uh, the idea of reflect comes from this concept that the Christian concept, it's nowhere else, really. It's not in any other religion. Um, and I'm glad to talk to you more about this if you have questions. But every other religion basically says what you do is you earn the goodness of the God that you're serving. Christianity is very different than that because we reflect back God's goodness that he gives us as a free gift. So he shows up and says that while you're a sinner, I love you and want your good. And we say, wow, that's really awesome, God. And God loves us in that place. And then anything good that we do that comes as a result of that is reflecting back to God the goodness that he started to give us originally. And so to me, it's very important that we're not the kind of church who says, hey, we're going to do a lot of really great things because we're awesome people, because that's not actually the case, <laughs> starting, starting with the pastor. All we get the chance to do is say God loves us so much that in his, the love that he gives us, we're just going to reflect that back as best we can. Lastly, uh, we chose the word Jesus because, uh, again, go back to that post-Christian society. As our world moves forward, and we don't know uh, how people see a church, it seems important to me to focus that in on Jesus, to focus that in on Jesus, because we could be a group of people that gets together to do like good things for our community, which would be nice and all, but it's, if it's not focused on Jesus, then in my mind, it's not a Christian church. And so we want to particularly put, put Jesus in there because we are particularly Christian people here, here at Kish, or, or we want to become more of that. Um, how are we doing? Awesome. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the Bible. Uh, the Bible. How does, this, how does what I'm sharing about relate to the Bible? So in my mind, uh, if you all have been around churches or Christianity or whatever for a while, you might have heard of this thing called the Great Commission. Uh, it's the end of the book of Matthew. And the way I see it, uh, making apprentices who reflect Jesus is literally a five-word shorter summary of the Great Commission that Jesus gave his disciples at the end of the book of Matthew. That Great Commission, um, it's called a co-mission. So you can think about that, break that word apart. Co, meaning a group of people, <laughs> Mission. So it sounds a lot to me like a church, like what's the church's mission? It's a co, like all of us together, and the mission that we're going to do. And Jesus said that his, his co-mission to his people was this. I want you to go, uh, as you go into the world, I want you to make disciples, or what I'm describing as apprentices, make disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And so, at least in my, this pastor's brain, uh, these elders' brains, the idea of making apprentices who reflect Jesus is literally a five-word summary of that commission that Jesus already has, has given to his followers. So I feel like we're in a, in a good biblical place relative to this mission statement. Um, all right. If you're a thinking person, uh, I hope that you have a, a next question in your brain right now. And I can't predict what it is, but I hope I can guess what it could be. It could be something like this. Okay, so we're here, and there's this odd pastor in a rocking chair, and he's talking about all this great stuff about our, our mission statement for the church, and that mission statement is making apprentices who reflect Jesus. That all sounds like super good and stuff, but like I've been part of groups, maybe it's a business or school or whatever, and they... Have, you know, they have a thousand meetings, they come up with a mission statement, they put it on the wall, and then like nothing actually happens, right? And so you could be wondering to yourself, like, that sounds really good, um, sounds like a, a good way to go forward, but I'm not sure, Luke, if like anything's actually going to change with that. Like, how's that going to affect my actual life? Like, you don't know, like, I live in 2023, and I have to like, after this, I have to go to this thing, and then we got a funeral, and then I got this and that, and like, how does this relate to me actually? And so, I, I hope I have an answer to that. And the answer is, uh, is, is a process, or you could call it like a growth trajectory or, or a, 
I don't want to say steps because steps involves like you check something off and you move forward to the next thing. But basically, uh, in, in my mind and in our mind in the elders' meetings, we have an idea of a kind of a, a progression through three areas that we think if someone's following the, this progression through these three areas, then they are going to be becoming a better apprentice of Jesus over time. What are the three things? Um, again, if you're the note-taking person, here's your chance. Um, so three growth uh, progression steps. Number one, receive God's love. Number two, love each other. And number three, love MIFCO and beyond. Love MIFCO and beyond. So three steps, receive God's love, love each other, love MIFCO and beyond. Let me explain them real briefly. Like I said earlier, we believe here in the gospel, and the gospel of Jesus says that uh, the author John says it most clearly, we love because he first loved us. And so there's a lot of churches, you know, hey, we're going to love all these people, we're going to love God, we're going to love others, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, don't think of yourself too highly, <laughs> because everything starts with God reaching out to us in love. And so everybody is going to meet the, the, the vision or the goal, is that everybody that comes into contact with Kish meets God because they say, wow, they hear in a sermon, they read in the Bible, they experience in people's caring for them, receive God's love. God loves us first. Kind of like you're a cup. If you could picture your body or your soul like a cup, and God's love is, he, he desperately wants, I know some of y'all are new here today, and so you're just like, what in the world is happening in this place? If anything else you need to hear today is that the, the, mess, the foundational message that we want to share is that God desperately wants to show you that he loves you. Um, that's the story of the Bible. Even if you think the story of the Bible is like a list of do's and don'ts and God's like an angry God up there that's just ready to smash you when you mess up, that's not the case. John 3.16, which is the most familiar verse, right? For God so loved the world that he sent his son. The idea is that God cares about you, he wants your good, and he loves you. And so he sent Jesus to die, to take the penalty of your sin on himself and to usher you into a new and glorious eternal life with him. Like, he really loves you. And so everything at Kish should start foundationally, not with something that we do, but with receiving the love that God already has for us. In theory, then, uh, what happens is that bubbles up, our cup kind of gets filled up, right? We're, we're overwhelmed by the goodness of God towards us. It fills up so much that it starts to spill out. And it spills out in two ways. Uh, the first way is to love each other. And this looks like uh, the kind of thing where we're in committed relationship with each other. Um, so we don't think that a church is the kind of place. I don't think that a church is the kind of place where you can just show up and sit down individually, kind of receive a word and go home individually and not be connected to other people. And the reason for that is because God actually created us to be relational beings because God is a relational God. That's the whole idea of the Trinity. And so he created us to be relational beings. And so once a person kind of begins this process of receiving God's love, that should flow into them so much and spill over to now that they're going to love each other. And what that looks like is being involved in some kind of intentional community. Now, you might already have your brain go into like, now the pastor's going to say we all need to be in a small group or something like that. Kind of. I'm not going to care so much about the particular details, but what I am going to care about is if anybody walks in here and they're not relationally connected with other people, whether that's a Sunday school class or a small group, or they're a part of the worship team, or they're part of something where they say, there's people who really know me, and there's people that I really know. That's kind of the second part of the progression here at Kish, right? So you receive God's love, love each other. The third step, and this is one of the ones that I think churches have not done as well in the past, is love Mifco and beyond. And this makes sense, because if you picture, if you picture how it was way back when almost everybody in America was Christians, we mostly cared about sending missionaries to other countries because that's where non-Christian people were. But in 2023, I think there's about 30,000 people in Mifflin County <laughs> that aren't part of a church. And so are we going to love missionaries and people in other countries? Absolutely. Like, why wouldn't we? But most of us are here, <laughs> and most of our relational connections are here. And so what this looks like in my mind is that we reach out in love 
to Mifflin County and beyond by sacrificially noticing and caring for people who are suffering in need or not, not suffering in need and show them and share with them this love of God. So this is the kind of stuff that Deb's talking about at Crossroads. If you've been here a while, we do our soup ministry, uh, India Valley Elementary School, loving your neighbors, finding anybody that's around you that you work with or your family members, I don't care who it is, if they don't know about God, we want to sacrificially love those people. And that's kind of the, the third thing. So if you can follow these three categories, receive God's love, love each other, love Mifco and beyond. All right, I'm going to get out of your way in just a minute, but I just want to leave you with... Um, four kind of more practical things to go from here, right? So this might sound to me, to you like, okay, well, here's this whole like high level, broad brush strokes, uh, mission kind of, kind of talk. Um, how does this actually matter? Or what's this going to relate to me? Four things. Let's see if I can rem- remember them. I have them written down in my Bible if I forget. Uh, number one is that we're going to sort of start to change some of the um, communication stuff around Kish to reflect these three areas of receive God's love, love each other, and love Mifco and beyond. And so what that means is that you'll probably notice the bulletins will get updated, the Kish update will get updated. A lot of the stuff that we already do around here, we just want to focus it into one of those three buckets so that we know what we're doing when we, when we decide, oh, hey, we have a small group. Well, that's in the love each other kind of category of things. Oh, here's the Sunday morning service. That's in the receive God's love kind of category of things. Here's the soup ministry. That's in the love Mifco and beyond kind of category of things. And the goal there is to, to give us some clarity and some focus on where we're going forward so you can kind of see how that all, all relates. So look for some updates in that kind of thing. Uh, number two, I said earlier this is like an 80% solution. I'm not a big fan. I'm not like one of those leaders who's like, all right, here's what we're doing. It's my way or the highway. If you don't like it, get out. Like, that's not me. So it can't be me, and it's not going to be me. Instead, the way I would like to lead is, here's the ideas that we're thinking about. Anybody have any ways to improve them? Anybody have their input? Anybody have any other thoughts? You know, we're, we're moving in a direction, so it's not like we have nothing, but we're willing to get feedback. And so to that end, if anybody has anything based on what I just am saying today that you want to communicate with me, I'm all ears. Uh, but also, uh, we're planning a... a um, a meeting, uh, not like a church business meeting kind of thing, but an open invitation to anybody who wants to care about Kish going forward. Uh, I think we're planning it. I'll send out more details later, but uh, February the 5th would be like a Sunday after church deal. And the idea would be to invite anyone who has some um, kind of uh, part in, in, in wanting Kish to go forward in a good way. And you don't have to be a member or not a member or that kind of stuff. It's mostly just Anybody who wants to talk through what I'm talking about right now in more detail will be invited to that meeting, and we'll just kind of continue to hash out more details of the stuff that I'm starting with today. So more communication going forward. Um, the third thing is this. It seems important to me, if we talk about this uh, making apprentices uh, who reflect Jesus, that all of us would kind of get a sense for where we are in those three kind of steps of the progression. So receive God's love. That's something you start, but you continue to do. And so maybe you find yourself today, and you're like, you know, I thought that that was like a one-time thing. Like, I received God's love, and I'm done with it. And maybe you realize, hopefully you realize, that that's something that can be ongoing. Or maybe you say, hey, I've been coming, and I've been sitting in this chair for one week or 20 years, and I'm not part of this love each other category of things. Like, I don't actually have a relational connection with other people here to support me and that I can support them. And so what does it look like for you to get more invested in that relational connection piece? Or maybe you feel relationally connected, you're receiving God's love, and you're like, what do I do next? The third thing would be love Mifco and beyond. And so how can you use your particular giftings and skill sets and whatever to take this church and to reach out with God's love to the rest of our, of our county uh, here in Mifflin County? And so that's the, the third thing is kind of do a self-analysis. Where do you feel like you fit in those three kind of buckets? And uh, the fourth thing I forget. You can laugh about that. That's right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to need, um, need help. Uh, I'm never one. My very first sermon I did here years ago now was about help. What does it look like to actually receive help? And um, we're going to need help in this because in my mind, if we do this mission, 
uh, making apprentices who reflect Jesus. We have like 46,000 people in Mifflin County, including all the people that are around here that want to become more like Jesus. And it's going to take more than just me to do that. And so particularly what we're going to need is people who want to invest in small groups, I think, of some sort, whether that's a Sunday school class or a a during-the-week kind of small group. And we're also going to need, um, maybe you think, oh, we're already doing a lot for our, ca- our, our community. Um, <laughs> according to both Emily and I, uh, we aren't. Uh, we, we, there's much more that we can do sacrificially to love our community. And so we have more ideas than we have people to, to do them. And so we're looking for people to kind of step into especially those two areas of what does it look like to be a lead a community and what does it look like to um, start something, some initiative towards loving our, our, our county. Um, all right, I want to end like this. Uh, I'm going to read a passage uh, from 1 John chapter 4 that I think kind of summarizes uh, in the Bible uh, a lot of what I've been trying to say. And then we're just going to sit on that for a moment of silence. And then uh, I'll pray us through that. And then Hayden's going to come up and lead us in a couple songs as we close. So let me read this. Uh, this is a few verses from 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 7 to 12. <clears throat> beloved, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. There we go. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another... God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Let's just take a moment of silence to kind of let that all sink in, and then I'll pray us, pray us out. Father, we thank you that you are a a good God who loves us, and that despite what our tendency might be to feel like we need to perform, we need to be perfect in order to receive your love, um, that's actually not the case. The Bible makes it very clear that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So I pray, Lord, for anybody who's shown up here today, um, whether they've been around for a hot minute or for a while that doesn't think that God loves them, that they'd get, um, that they, they would see or get to, get to know or at least hear about a God who desperately wants their good, who's chasing after them, that wants them uh, to walk into apprenticeship to Jesus, to discipleship to Jesus, because that is actually the best and the most healthy way to live, um, because you actually want, us, want our good, that you haven't set up uh, to, to discipline us because you're, you're an angry, um, controlling God, but because you actually want us to live the best possible life. I pray, Lord, for those who know you, that they would um, grow in their, in their experience of your love and goodness, um, and that that love would overflow into acts that love each other, and especially that reach out into our community and, and communicate, uh, make tangible, give, give tangible expressions to the love that you have for us. I pray, Lord, for all these folks here today that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that, that literally your face would shine upon them, that you would do something good in their hearts, you'd meet them where they are um, with your still, small voice, um, and that that would be meaningful for them and bring glory to you. Pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen.